to Kali Tribune podcast. Uh, this is a question and answer session. Uh, as we already announced, we'll be taking questions and it will take some time uh, to answer any of them because of some external circumstances. Uh, as was expected, we got a lot of questions, not a single one of them <laughs> easy to answer. So, for this first session, uh, that time provided opportunity to make, I will take two questions that are somewhat related. Uh, first is by a commenter under the moniker of Koshis, and it is, quote, what is the ego, how it works? The other is one of the questions posed by Jack Darby, and I will paraphrase because it's a, it's a long, long comment, uh, not to waste any time. It is a question of whether uh, René Guénon considers psychoanalysis satanic or occult, and why so. Uh, this is a very interesting question for many reasons. I think you will understand why even uh, those of you who are not interested that much in Genon because this goes beyond a single thinker. Psychoanalysis I consider also very important and influential phenomena and uh, from the early 20th century onwards, even to this day, and it is quite revealing to a lot of things. Uh, so without further ado, let us let us commence. The first question. What is the ego. Now, in order to answer this question, we have to put forward one distinction. Ego is usually spoken of in terms of psychology or even, to be more precise, psychoanalysis, analysis, where ego is a kind of uh, border uh, of... Uh, external and internal influences that make up uh, man's psyche in a materialistic sense, understood psyche understood in a materialistic sense as a function of a body, as something that we just use as a word to uh, denote uh, the highest expression of our biological structure, that is to say what is called consciousness. Now, uh, there is another way to speak about ego, and this another way uh, will commence in this podcast. Uh, this is uh, understanding of ego as a metaphysical or indeed quasi-metaphysical principle. Uh, if something is metaphysical principle, this means that it is a one being or one cause or one notion in which everything can be either resolved or everything can be reduced to. Now, in order to understand something, whatever it is, especially if that something is a kind of corruption, and I do believe that ego is an ultimating corruption of metaphysics. We have to first understand uh, uncorrupted, wholesome, and to a larger extent possible perfect example of the thing that got corrupted in the first place. So f to understand disease, uh, you have to initially understand health. To understand uh, what's wrong with a sick man, you have to uh, know very well what it means to be a healthy man. So, uh, we'll first point out what ego is not and what ego is in fact opposed to or is corruption of. It is my opinion that it is the utmost corruption of the notion of person, to be more precise, Christian notion of person, because it is very arguable that there is any other. Of course, persons existed uh, before first year AD, 
but uh, the formulation of personhood as something that can be used, for instance, in law as a basis of of communal living and such things is 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 a fruit fruit of Christianity and fruit that was not yielded easy. It took hundreds of years and much conflict for it, both political and philosophical and theological. Now. We won't go too deep into to, into explaining what person is. We'll just note how we come, how we can come <coughs> to a proper understanding of person. Uh, if we take person in a metaphysical sense, which is not the only sense we can take it in, and not the highest probably, uh, but if we take metaphysical approach, uh, uh, we understand person by resolving, analyzing. Because analysis and resolutio, uh, the term, the second term that came to power in uh, high middle ages, uh, is in fact translation of analysis. Uh, analysis and resolutio means, uh, to resolve back as something, uh, it's best to have an image of untying a knot or following a thread to its beginning. Like, for instance, if you remember myth of Theseus and Minoyan labyrinth and Minotaur and Ariadna's uh, tread that he used uh, to find his way back from the labyrinth, this would be resolutio. The important thing with resolution or analysis in traditional sense is that it takes all the qualities <coughs> that can possibly be known of something and then resolves those qualities, follows their, um, follows them to their root. And the termination of analysis, fulfillment of analysis or resolutio occurs when you resolve them back into one. Not when you reduce them, but when you resolve all of them back into their origin, where they exist in a most perfect way. This can be sometimes understood in abstract metaphysical sense as a resolution of the effect to the core, into the cause, because in this uh, kind of thinking, uh, effect never really separates from cause, and you can, uh, I mean existentially, cause is always present. And you can resolve back into it. So when you resolve, for instance, person in back into its origin, uh, what you get is understanding where a person comes from, on which it, uh, which is, uh, uh, which is the power on which it depends to be, uh, to be in existence. In Christian sense, this is the act of, it, it, it depends on the act of creation. Pure and simple. Uh, but uh, the other way around would be reduction. Uh, what I term reduction, although this term was also used beforehand, but in another meaning today, reduction and even analysis in a modern sense is in fact corruption of original way of analysis, where you uh, take all the qualities of a being, all the forms that make it what it is and uh, deny them, negate them until you are left supposedly with something that cannot be further negated or denied. Something that is absolutely simple in a completely opposite way than the simplicity of the thing you came to through resolutio because in the, in the proper sense simplicity means all encompassing. Something that encompasses all qualities, that all qualities are contained in it because they originated in it. In this other sense, corrupted sense, I would say, uh, you just peel them off, like peeling the onion, uh, with, uh, with an idea that at the center of onion there is something. Uh, two things are immediately obvious. Uh, the, the corrupted, uh, as I would call it, approach, does not presuppose, presuppose existence of outside origin. That is to say, some, that, that being in question has something before it that, that bring, brought it into existence. And the other that, uh, which stems from the first is that it is some kind of, uh, 
self-subsistent, uh, self-subsistent principle that this principle, this, this, uh, reduced, uh, this being reduced of all qualities can stand for itself, that there is nothing, nothing out before it or outside it. And this is very important. This is the way you come to ego, to metaphysical ego. Now, there is a very important thing here. Uh, ego is what you might call individuum in the material sense. Now, why material? Because bereftening something of all its qualities means stripping it down to the matter. In traditional understanding, you cannot do this because matter is uh, uh, matter is always informed. You have a notion of materia signata, for instance, if I am a human being with a name and surname, my materia signata are my bones, sinews, meat, <laughs> flesh, and other things. And interestingly enough, materia signata is not always only formed, but in the terms, in, in a case of, of human being, of man, uh, they are personal. Uh, there is a special, uh, a special uh, relation of uh, possession on the part of the person uh possession of this this special specially formed body it is it is not just a random thing as if the person would be understood as a disembodied uh, spirit or soul that has no body and that is not in that is in no way uh, related to body if it chooses not to be no 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 in christian understanding this doesn't work uh, body is a constituent not only body but I would say even ethnicity, uh, history, family history, a lot of things uh, uh, that mainly have to be understood as coming from the past. Past is very important thing here and we'll come back to it. Now, ego does not have this. It is an eight atom. It is a particle with no properties. And it is a particle that is supposedly indivisible. And it is a particle that has a twofold sense. One sense is this uh, pure subjectivity, which we call ego. The other pole, uh, the same thing uh, observed from different uh, perspective, is atom. Atom. That is, that is to say, the particle with no parts. Pure materiality. Now, the temporal aspect of this is very important how we understand time for from the standpoint of ego ego can understand time of, or time can be explained from the perspective of ego only as a infinite series of discrete moments now infinite series of something discrete is would be a pure number that is to say unit pure unit <clears throat> that has no continuity. That is to say, every single unit is thing in itself. It doesn't uh, require anything before it to exist. It doesn't have to recure to anything before it. It doesn't have to project to anything uh, in front of it in the future. So it is some kind of infinite now, but not the eternal now of, of, of Ion, for instance, of eternity as understood properly. It is a corruption, I would say, of the proper understanding. Now, why, why is this important? Uh, this is important for us to illustrate this abstract metaphysical, uh, metaphysical analysis. Uh, I'll give you one example. For instance, in popular entertainment, uh, now that classical art has been all but obliterated, uh, the popular entertainment that was based upon it is being obliterated. You have a series, BBC series about Trojan War, Iliad, about Troy. So, you, and you have uh, the actor playing uh, Achille, Achilles, uh, uh, who is uh, by his origin sub-Saharian black man. 
Now, everybody who read Homer knows that uh, Achille was blonde. <laughs> <laughs> and that it is uh, even very important uh, for Homer to use this this uh, metaphors that, that 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 he compares him to to lion and so on with the mane of blonde hair and so on and so forth. Uh, Troy is is a European uh, European epic uh, epic poem epic cycle. It has nothing to do with with uh, sub-Saharan Africa, uh, at least at this level, and the very attempt to film it uh, without recurse to its origin and without recurring even to it as source material is the instance of this ego metaphysics. Because uh, there is uh, ego is principally not determined by past. It is not determined by any causality outside itself. It has no origin. Or better to say, it is origin of itself. It originates in every single instance it is. Like, well, you could imagine it as jumping out of nothingness and jumping back into nothingness. And if this seems Ill, um, contradictory to you, it is because it is. But this is the way a good deal of us uh, perceive perceive the world and ourselves today, partly, of course, because in our nature is not to understand things in this way, but our science, I'm afraid, our, let's call it uh, scientific culture, uh, just uh, just is just founded on this, on this contradictory metaphysical principle, and all its accomplishments, in my opinion, uh, 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 have no no real value if this is what it stands at their bedrock because this is not a thing that can stand. It will crumble eventually because crumbling is its in in its nature. Uh, so when you take past, for instance, from the perception of ego, there is no uh, reason why ego would uh, worry itself about. Uh, the, the the race of Achilles, uh, the Myrmidonian, or the origin of Homeric points, it can uh, it can reform everything in the image it decides to reform it because this is the only thing it can understand. It can only understand projecting images that are bereft of any kind of essence. Uh, the reason for this is that. Reducing everything to ego means su suspending uh, essential intellectual activities because intellectual activities, acts of intelligence, uh, reveal at least in glimpses the origin of something. They are always uh, they are, they are always leading you back into this. Uh, uh, principle that stands before. Now, as you can probably see, I use before and after and now in not so temporal terms. I use it, use them as, as, as a kind of vectors that everything has. And I believe this is true. I believe that, and I already wrote about this a lot about this concept of uh, understanding of Ion of eternity where uh, the temp what we understand as divisions of time are in fact uh, expressions or forms of the eternal uh, eternal activity uh, of, of 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 something that is not material that is that is uh, beyond uh, beyond confines of the visible but we cannot now go into this and this eternity is a root of time. This is where time comes from, not the other way around. And as we said in the beginning, you can understand lower only by understanding the higher. So to un really understand time, you cannot go from the time itself. You have to observe its relation to eternity. Uh, but when you do this uh, ego mistake and uh, put ego forward as a principle, you lose the time itself. So, there is no history for ego. 
This is very important and its uh, existence requires destruction of history because deep down it requires destruction of eternity. It requires destruction of there being ultimately a creator, there being something that is higher than ego and that ego owes its existence to. So when you see those uh, identity race baiting uh, entertainment forms that are that now abound this is very serious thing this is in my opinion not a passing fad and uh, resistance towards it in the sense of uh, some kind of reaffirmation in this case of white racial consciousness of something like that as if something like that even existed uh, before 19th, 18th century, it's very arguable, but let us put that aside for, for this, uh, instant. But, uh, the, 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 the ability to, uh, the, the attempt to turn back is completely futile because this racial understanding reduction to biological given, as if you can have purely biological given and as if this reduction is possible, is nothing but a reduction that prepared or paved the way for, for this absolute reduction. So you have, this comes from the fact that materialism was a kind of sta stage in this process of uh, denial of all qualities, of all qualifications of life and world, stripping it to the matter and then dissolving the matter. And the solution of matter, the solution of everything is what you have. For instance, in, in, in this case, in this stupid BBC series, when somebody can do this without second thought, of course, a reaction of, of people watching television is, <laughs> is not favorable. Not in this generation. In other generations, it, it already can be. I don't think this will happen because you cannot understand reality, uh, but any kind of political movement to, to counter this, uh, I think just, just ends up uh, appropriated by this, uh, this, uh, tendency or this uh, stream of historical, let's say, degradation of traditional forms of knowledge. Let's call them traditional forms of living, any kind of continuity. So this would be ego as I use it, uh, as I talk about it uh, in on Kali Tribune, because this is what interests me the most. Now to the second question, which is somewhat related to this, can be related to this. Uh, it is a question, and I've par paraphrased uh, on uh, what was Genon's understanding of psychoanalysis. Uh, uh, did he understand it as a form of occultism, or satanism, and why? And what is the role of behaviorism in his notions? Now, I'll quote from The Reign of Quantity and Sign of the Times, his 1945 book, that he has a special chapter on psychoanalysis. He really hated psychoanalysis, so he never missed the chance to say something uh, derogatory of it with full right. So I quote, The noteworthy thing is this strange delusion through which psychoanalysts manage to observe the psychical states as so much, quote-unquote, deeper to an extent that they are simply lower. Now, this is my, uh, me translating from Croatian translation, so maybe it's not clear. What he says here is that psychoanalysts conflate deep with low. In Rengenon, uh, the most important thing uh, as a principle through which you can really understand a lot of what he's saying, uh, it's important to understand these spatial, spatial vectors he uses. He says, uh, uh, he, the main, the main, uh, the main trust of psychoanalysis is towards down, downwards instead of upwards. Something that is, I would uh, affirm, from a standpoint of Catholic tradition, uh, 
Christian tradition that is uh, something that is very, very, very clear. When you take, for instance, uh, fathers or uh, let's say a rather early, early theologians, uh, I'm thinking about uh, Boetius, uh, who says at, at one place, God is subject of nothing. Uh, this is very important, uh, because what this means, I won't go <laughs> into, an, uh, into words, yes, it will take us too far, but uh, suffice it to say, this means that God as an origin and God as being cannot be understand, understood, that is to say, cannot be observed without a <laughs> highest level of impiety of someone who is under but someone who is above. And this is something that you have in these words, for instance, subjectum, something that is put beneath and so on, and uh, put under something to hold something, or even hypostasis. But they explain, those old thinkers explain uh, those terms at length. Uh, but logic uh, of this is very important because uh, they were very much aware they cannot mess up uh, the spatial sense in, let's say, in these acts of intelligence. That uh, uh, one quality of the act of intelligence is also a spatial sense of non-spatial things, because uh, one has to agree uh, that, uh, with those who said that everything that is, is originally contained uh, contained in in virtualis, as they would say, in, uh, in virtual uh, in, in 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 the in the in the how would I call it the act the act of God that still uh, not not saying uh, I won't talk about sorry so I, I got I got a bit uh, a bit too deep into into digression I I, I would just say that. For everything that is, there is a perfect paradigm of it. This is what I want to say. And uh, this perfect paradigm does not have, is not uh, confined uh, by conditions that the spatio-temporal, let's call it, or natural thing has. Uh, so, for instance, space in its virtual meaning, that is to say, let's call it space in God's mind or space in God, is something much more than space in this world. Or better to say locus, topos, place, what we call place. So the, the, uh, so it can be understood when you, when you think about metaphysics or when you, when you think, uh, uh, think above and beyond confines of visible, uh, you start to use that naturally, you start to use some, some of those terms that we kind of consider that, that are derived from physical world in, in, in a sense that cannot be derived from physical world. This is what I wanted to say. Sorry about, about a bit complicated digression. So this is very important in Genon. Now, Genon understood psychoanalysis as counterfeit and even something uh, approaching what we call uh, counter initiation now genon understands initiation in in a sense of uh, the the process where one uh, from person from approaching that is belonging to some of the traditional forms of Metaphysics, in fact, people usually say religions, but Genon puts metaphysics above religion. He was agnostic of sorts. Uh, in a traditional, some of these traditional forms that have their uh, religious like outer shell, you are going deeper into, into the center of this given spiritual tradition. And counter initiation would be Doing the opposite, that is to say, uh, to be initiated in the mysteries of counter-religion or counter-tradition. That is to say, uh, the forms of uh, 
spirit that are destruct destructive of spirit something that he never calls really what it should be called it called satanism so counter initiation would be some kind of let's say uh, receiving devil's sacraments if we are to talk in christian terms and i do talk in christian terms um, uh, and uh, counterfeit on the other hand is a situation where the sh empty shell of spiritual tradition that is to say institutions for instance or forms in which form uh, pure forms uh, bereft of content of some traditional way of, of thinking or traditional religion uh, are filled, infused by a spirit who, which is completely counter to that tradition that uses them as a kind of to, 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 to parody. He uses this term also to parody the original truth of this religion. So, for instance, Christianity, Satanism would do something like that. Uh, it would, uh, as evil is understood as a parasite on the good. It cannot create forms that good created. It has to assimilate the forms of good and then from inside out to make them ridiculous or uh, make them uh, in, a, in a kind of bait to to attract people and destroy them and so on and so forth and Yanon uh, thought that the psychoanalysis kind of satisfied these conditions uh, because for, for various reasons uh, and uh, the main reason I would say and he would say that is was the inversion inversion of symbolism or uh, uh, because inversion is uh, in the spatial sense uh, the clear uh, the clear sign of degradation and corruption uh, as we said in our answer to to our first question corruption ego is for all intents and purposes corrupted person that is to say corrupted uh, corrupted understanding of person what was understood as person in traditional way uh, so what uh, what psychoanalysis does is takes symbols uh, that are uh, given in dreams and all of the explains all of them on the most uh, on the basis of most degrading factors as you probably know from the on the on the grounds of either infantile sexuality or sexuality that is unbridled by conscience because in dreams it can run its course freely or some even more primordial impulses as as, as a murderous intent <laughs> and the, uh, the, the the various complexes that come from the supposedly uh, savage origin of human beings like murder of father or or uh, or uh, sexual intercourse with mother and so on and so forth for Genon this is the clear sign of inversion of degradation because symbols originally uh, get their meaning from above and now I'll interject uh, as for dreams there, there are dreams uh, that Freud used uh, his followers to found their theory and their practice you can have such dreams, but you also can have, and most of us had dreams that are that cannot be reduced to this. And sometimes, in very rare occasions, uh, these dreams can be can really be. You have a sense that somebody gave you comprehension that you couldn't couldn't get in a waking state. Predictive dreams, dreams which predict uh, the future future events uh, happen to everybody i i don't know anybody who who i'm talk, talked about dreams that never had some such dreams and this clearly cannot be reduced to what freud does uh carl gustav jung is a separate issue he again on hated jung <laughs> for the same reason because he he thought uh, the more you go into this spiritual explanation when you are on the level of matter you are you are when you are on the level of matter you are safe 
uh, when you go in the, the spiritual sphere, uh, relatively safe, uh, you are digging below the matter, as Genon would say. And he considered that psychoanalysis is 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 a, is a form of this, and that psychoanalysis has this initiatory form. That is to say, every psychoanalyst has to be psychoanalyzed by other psychoanalysts. It was, this was a requirement. And Renault, René Genon considered that psychoanalysis can bring irreparable damage because it delves into real issues but that shouldn't be dwelled there are things that shouldn't be known or if they are to be known they have to be known under guidance of someone that is on a higher level and given in the form of knowledge that will kind of like uh, uh, redeem them and this is very common sense I would say it, uh, because it a psychoanalysis uh, brings person in the position that it is it ends up uh, dismantled and there is no way uh, or even no position from which you can put it back together and this is a very bad metaphor in itself because person is not uh, person is not a construct as, as something made of uh, lego cubes uh, but it's something that has to be understood uh, in organic way. And once you break this, uh, break this unity, uh, you cannot bring it together. Only, I would say, God can bring it together because only God can resurrect the dead. When you, once you break up the organism, this is not organism anymore. Uh, so in this sense, uh, Genon believed that, that, that psychoanalysis has even probably uh, origin in, in 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 the work of what he would call uh, what he how he calls them uh, uh, sub sublime lower or infernal influences that is to say demons and, and such such things he gives no he, he when he writes about such things he only gives you a hint and then leaves it so you cannot make much from it and uh, well. Who is interested into those things will not not be satisfied as to extensive explanation he just throws it in and it, truth be told uh, the logic of how psychoanalysis was set up really indicates to something like this because uh, and to conclude René Guénon asks if everybody has to be psychoanalyzed uh, to uh, be a psychoanalyst uh, who did the first analysis was it Freud himself or how, how this came about that there is something there is something hidden in the origin of this of this quasi science so that would be Genon's understanding of psychoanalysis thank you for your attention Thank mm -hmm. you.